In October of 2019, Global News and CTV reported an incident that occurred at my school, St. George's. Some grade ten students posted pictures and articles about Nazi Germany and their violence and racist ways against the Jewish community. They praised Nazis online by spreading memes and sending inappropriate messages. When I first heard about this, I was appalled. I couldn't imagine that such things would ever even happen. I thought racism was just some sort of fantasy in a movie. So of course. I wouldn't have expected it to occur right in front of my eyes. Ultimately, this was against the Canadian Multiculturalism Act and the Saint George's School Code of Conduct. The cause for such a terrible mistake was suspension, or for more serious offenders, expulsion. Our headmaster sent out a letter in response to this event, in which he said, "This event." Shows us that we have much more to do in terms of ensuring that our community understands and lives with empathy and respect for all people. Racism is all around us; it's never far away. This event really bothered me. It prompted me to realize that racism is still alive and well, and to learn how dangerous it can be. Seeing something like that so close to me really made me recognize one important thing, and that is the importance of running to the rescue of love, so that peace can fall. If you look at my T-shirt here, I drew the slogan with my very own hands. A great many thanks to my art teacher as well for her help. It represents and reflects. On my proposition and determination to fight racism to the very end and defeat it once and for all. Not only is racism still close to us, it has been for generations. I'm sure all of you has heard of Martin Luther King Jr., an activist famous for his profound leadership in the fight for fairness across all nations. In 1963, he delivered a world-famous speech titled "I Have a Dream," and in his speech, he said. I have a dream that one day, in Alabama, with its vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day, right there in Alabama, little black girls and black boys will be able to join hands with little white girls and white boys as sisters and brothers. As a crucial leader of the civil rights movement, he motivated many people to stand up for human race equality. He was also one of those who was willing to give his life for his dream, having been assassinated in 1968 for his beliefs. To this day, though, people still respect him for his dedication and sacrifice. The president of the U.S. at this time, Ronald Reagan, has even made a day just to honor him on the third Monday of every January, signaling that the fight against discrimination continues on. Today, King's dream has made a lot of progress, and the U.S. has even elected their first black president, which is, of course, Barack Obama. However, despite this progress being made, incidents of racism still erupt everywhere around the world. No community is immune to racism, and no words without action can change that fact. So, what we need to do is to run to the rescue of love, so that peace can fall. There really is no better example than the COVID-19 outbreak. After the virus spread from China to the rest of the world, many people have started propagating racist, anti-Chinese ideas. Sometimes even reaching the extreme of physically attacking innocent Chinese people. Some even called it the Chinese virus. Why? Why should we call COVID-19 the Chinese virus? It just doesn't really make sense, let alone fair. And then again, it's not just the Chinese who have been wrong. In the midst of the outbreak, the French were discriminated against by some countries in Europe because they had many cases of the virus, and the U.S. was even denounced by Asian countries as well for the same reason. Many people wouldn't care to just stop and think about what they are doing, and most importantly, why? I mean, COVID-19 is a problem to humans, not to one specific race. Why should one try to blame a worldwide problem on any one group and not just simply try to help stop it? We need to think quickly, and one thing we should all know is that the virus—it does not use any passports or respect any borders. 
as awful as COVID-19 is, it is also a great corrector, showing us the correct way to go, and we should not let this chance for realization go to waste. Let us all pause and think about our actions, so we will not let history repeat itself. I'm sure no one wants to step back into segregation or visit the mistakes of our past. I know what most of you are thinking. Are these people who discriminate against each other really so cruel enough to do so? Well, actually, they aren't cruel at all. Racism comes from roughly four causes. Number one, being from simply not understanding one's culture or religion. Two, difference in belief or opinion. Three, being misled into supporting one's selfish demands. And four, just about that person's ignorance of what happens around him. These are some of the things that can make a person think his or her decisions are always correct. And someone from the other opposing race just seems a bit unnatural. This can then be expanded to a harsh topic of war or extremely violent arguments. So, what can we do to stop racism? The solution lies in education. Starting with each little step, we can firstly learn more about one's culture or religion and get to understand what it means to be part of a particular race. We can open up either to everything that's going around us. We can gain more of an informed opinion, learn to think for ourselves, and learn how to resolve arguments. These are the things that we must, must know before confronting something as big as racism. We need to trust modern science, not rumors. We need to fight the virus, not each other. And we need to stop racism. Many people dream of building a better world, but you cannot change anything if you don't change yourself. Our dreams of a world where there is peace and harmony can only start where you can reach. We are humans, and we are the governors of this planet. And racism is the obstacle to the construction of a better world. No one can predict what will happen in the future, but we can start making a difference today. Let us all not discriminate against each other because we are all builders of our home, and we should not let this one simple discriminatory mistake divide us. We should all know that, as humans, we are responsible for taking care of each other. COVID-19 is a medical problem, not a racial one. We all need to pause and think about that, and what makes us truly humans. But this, honestly, is just a talk, if no action is made. If no one acts, then the worst infection of all, racism, will persist. Here's what you can do to help, how you can run to the rescue of love. The next time you meet with someone new, have a conversation and learn one thing about them. We should all run to the rescue, our rescue, with love, so that peace can follow. Canada is a country made from immigrants. We value multiculturalism. If we are racist to each other, our country could be ripped apart. Some of us might feel distant to this issue and think, well, is this really a problem? Why should I even worry about it? Personally, I believe that no matter what age, what race, what culture we are from, we are all parts of humanity. And racism is something that's associated with all of us. We should, from the day that we are born to the day our lives end, all care about the biggest virus ever until we are unable to do so. By then, I hope we can finally have a peaceful world for our later generations. This blank page up here is for us all to give, to fill this page with more ways to solve racism. Racism is war without smoke, but needless to say, with cruelty and fear. If we can run to the rescue of love, however, ladies and gentlemen, peace will follow. Thank you.